Will ChatGPT take over my job? This is the most popular question right now in people's mind. I'm a senior solutions architect working at AWS. I have been using ChatGPT for last several weeks to do different tasks. In this video, I'm going to test ChatGPT in three areas. Area number one, I'm going to ask ChatGPT some of the popular AWS interview questions. Area number two, I'm going to ask ChatGPT to give us some code sample and some other stuff that you need for studying either for interview or your real world projects. Test number three, I'm going to ask ChatGPT some of the real world questions that I get from my customers as part of my day to day job and see how ChatGPT performs. Finally, we'll reach the conclusion whether ChatGPT will take over your job or not. This is going to be an exciting video. Please click that subscribe and like button, grab your popcorn and let's get started. Where from we are going to get the AWS interview questions? Well, we are going to ask ChatGPT of course. Always important to remember your manners. Please give some AWS interview questions. While ChatGPT is generating the answer, it is important to remember that ChatGPT is just scraping the internet and getting the answer of this question. So likely it is going to Glassdoor, LinkedIn, Stack Overflow and creating this list. All right, so it gave us a list of 10 questions and some of these questions are pretty common. But first, I'm going to ask ChatGPT if it knows what is the best cloud or what is AWS. All right, so it gave us the official definition of AWS, which is good. But let's say the interviewer is higher management and they want you to explain AWS like they are just a beginner. Please explain to me what is AWS like I am a five years old. Okay, so it generated an answer. Let's go through it. Okay, imagine you have a big toy chest in your room. Inside that chest, there are many different types of toys like blocks, dolls, car, and action figures. These toys are like computer programs and tools that people use to make websites, apps, and games. Now imagine that instead of keeping the toy chest in your room, the toys are stored in a big special building far away. That building is called Amazon Web Services or AWS for short. People can go to that building and rent the toys they need to play with and they can put them back when they are done. All right, I'm not going to read the next two paragraphs, but this is a pretty damn good explanation. If I ask this question in an interview and you give me this answer, I will be pretty happy. All right, so now let's go back to the list and ask some other questions. This is a pretty common question. How do you monitor and troubleshoot performance issues in an AWS environment? So let's scroll down, paste the question, here you go. It listed some of the services such as CloudWatch. CloudWatch is obviously a, a great service to monitor and troubleshoot. It says you can collect and monitor log files and set alarms. AWS Trusted Advisor is also a good answer. AWS Elastic Beanstalk, well, so Elastic Beanstalk is a compute service which makes it easy to run uh, your web application and services. I would not say this because this doesn't relate to uh, monitor and troubleshoot performance because interviewer is not saying that, tell me how to troubleshoot with Elastic Beanstalk. X-Ray is a good answer. Of course, third-party monitoring too. All right, so overall this is a good answer, but I want to ask a follow-up question because rarely in an interview, interviewer is just go over this question from one to 10. Interviewer will ask you a question and based on the answer, you will get follow-up question. So let's scroll down and I'm going to ask, how do you troubleshoot a serverless application? So it gives me these seven uh, different points. So one thing is it just gets different <laughs> information as, and puts in like long bullets or like seven points, 10 points which is very difficult for you to remember. But anyway, let's go through the answer. It says check the application logs, which is definitely a correct way. Uh, monitor resource usage. So here it says that uh, use CloudWatch metrics to check the resource usage. And then it says, hey, check for cold starts, check the event source, check for timeouts, etc." I would have liked that, hey, select some important metrics such as uh, invocation time, the scaling metrics, and put a alert on it because you cannot go manually check all these event source timeouts and depending on that, you need to act on it. So let's say you said, hey, my cold start is higher and then interviewer may ask you, how do I reduce cold start in Java lambdas? So I'm basically trying to see if it gives the new announcement like snap start, which drastically reduces the cold start for Java Lambda. 
Uh, so it says, hey, use provision concurrency, increase the memory size, reuse database connections, uh, reduce the initialization time, uh, use smaller deployment packages. So these are all valid. And then it says use layers. So this one is not correct. Uh, layers does not do anything to reduce your cold start. It basically lets you reuse the same code across multiple lambdas. <laughs> Else everyone will be putting their lambda code in uh, one layer and just include it. So obviously I understand this, this uh, chat GPT doesn't look beyond a certain date. So snap start is not there, but I'm not too happy by seeing the layers. This should not have been uh, included. So for interview questions, it seems like chat GPT is great to give you the initial basic questions. But if you get a follow up questions, it gives you a good start, but you need to study a little bit further. Just relying on the chat GPT answer is not enough. All right, now let's go to the second test, which is some of the popular study topics on how can chat GPT help us. Give a sample cloud formation to create an unique S3 bucket. So let's see if chat GPT can give us a cloud formation template. All right, so generated the cloud formation. That is pretty impressive. Uh, so I'm going to copy this code and go to my cloud formation and test it out. All right, I'm in cloud formation. I'm going to click this create stack and then fill in the generated code. Go to template, paste this out, click submit. All right, the stack ran successfully. This is the bucket, test GPT US East one. Let's check it out. All right, it did create the S3 bucket. So I'm going to take it up a notch and ask to write us a Python code to create the bucket. Give us Python code to create an unique S3 bucket. Let's see how it does. Wow, this is pretty cool. So it gave us this Python code, but again, we are going to test it out. So I'm going to copy this code. Let's run this. All right, process exited with code zero. That means it is successful. I would have liked if it displayed <laughs> the bucket, uh, but let's check it out anyway. Let's go to our S3 console. All right, so it did create this. It just created this uh, bucket, my unique bucket. So this still works, which is pretty good. Now we are going to take it even one more notch and ask ChatGPT to generate the code for Lambda. So it generated the Lambda code. This is incredible. Imagine if you needed to do this using Google. So you have to Google this. You'll probably go to Stack Overflow and check out whether that is doing it or not. Go to the another Stack Overflow answer, etc. Chat GPT is literally just giving you the answer. And this one also works. Uh, so the last thing I want to test out is, let's say you are learning SQL, which is very, very popular as well in real world projects. And you want to get an example of a uh, left outer join. Okay, so let's see how it works. Give me an example of left outer join SQL. So it explained what is left outer join and then gave an example. And then it kind of elaborated and said that you can also specify some other columns. I mean, this is pretty impressive. I'm asking another question, give me sample SQL to create a product table. So I just want to see what kind of column does it create? It's pretty impressive. See, it's creating the column, which are um, the most common in the product table, like product ID, product name, product description, category, unit price, stock, is active, created at, and updated at. In my mind, ChatGPT is a pretty good study partner. So these days, whenever I'm studying something, I'm actually asking the question in ChatGPT. Okay, so which brings me to the last part, which is asking ChatGPT some real world question. Like I said before, I'm a senior solutions architect working at AWS, and these are some of the actual questions I get. So one of the question I get is, how do you optimize Kubernetes networking cost for Amazon EKS? Folks who are using Kubernetes in production, they already know how to optimize the cost using tuning the request and limits. That's the first thing. But Kubernetes, you also incur networking costs such as if your pods are in multiple availability zone, when they communicate, you incur traffic cost. If your database is in one availability zone and your application is in a different availability zone, uh, you will incur some uh, data transfer cost. If your um, ingress is running in a node port mode, then it, is, it has to make an extra hop, possibly in a different availability zone. Uh, so let's see what this answer says. Use a managed Kubernetes service like Amazon EKS. So this is kind of invalid, right? I'm already saying it's running on Amazon EKS. Use ENI and Elastic IPs to optimize network traffic. I'm not sure how that helps it. 
Uh, this one is helpful. Use Kubernetes network policies to control and segment, segment network traffic. Uh, so you are kind of forcibly stopping the traffic between uh, different parts if you don't need to. Uh, use Kubernetes service and ingress. So this is very generic. They are already using ingress. The correct answer should be use ingress in the IP mode. So the IP addresses are registered directly in the load balancer. So they don't have to make the extra cross availability zone hop. Uh, use Amazon CloudWatch metrics and logs to monitor and troubleshoot network issues. Yeah, this one is appropriate. You can check in CloudWatch as well as uh, billing usage, what your networking costs are. Use Amazon VPC CNI. This one is not really valid because it's assuming that the question assumes they are already using VPC CNI. And then it mentions Kubernetes uh, autoscaling, which is not directly related unless you use it to create the nodes in the same availability zone, but it doesn't mention that. Another question uh, I generally get is, my application logs for Amazon EKS application is throttling. How do I solve this so that I doesn't lo lose any logs? I'm using Fluentbit. I'm not going to go through this uh, full answer because again, pretty sure you folks will be bored with this uh, long answers. Uh, but again, couple good points it mentions, but it doesn't mention some of the critical points. Okay, so this is the verdict. Chat GPT is here to stay. This will only get better. You should not resist it. It is not going to take over your job. It will only help you get better and help you achieve your career. As you could see, it's a great starting point. It gives you some pointers, but then you need to go and dive deep a little bit for the follow-up questions. It's a great study guide. If you want to just find a snippet of code, CloudFormation, SQL query, even Lambda code, it is just giving it to you. And I'm curious if I run Docker file or something, whether it will give it, I'm sure it will. I'm not fully relying on it. As you could see, if you ask uh, like a real world question where you have to uh, go a little bit deeper, you have to understand it from your actual learning experience, then uh, the answers are not 100% correct. I predict in few years, People will use more ChatGPT than they use Google to ask questions. Uh, currently, ChatGPT cannot give you a diagram. Like if you ask Google, hey, can you show me a diagram of three-tier architecture? Google will show you an image, which is great. Uh, but ChatGPT cannot show any architecture diagram yet. Assume in next couple of years, they will add that and then it's trouble for Google. So ask some questions to ChatGPT. Let me know in the comment section if you found some question it gave a pretty bad answer or some question it, it gave you great answer. Let me know in the comments so that it is helpful to other folks in the comment section. They can upvote your comment if it is helpful. All right, that's it for this one. I'll see you guys and girls in the next one. Bye.